in case you've been wondering how to use the conditional display option found in the Drive Architect editor, then please watch this video. Hi, it's Yulia with Drive Teams, and today we're going to take a look at how we can use this option in order to create some elements that will display differently according to the person that's viewing them. For example, you can take a background section element and create different display variants for it in which you add some conditional display rules so that the background section looks different according to the person that's viewing it. As I said, this option is available for some of the Drive Architect elements and we're gonna see how to use it right now. So let's take this homepage for example. As you can see, this welcomes the new users to my site and it shows that we're selling a photography course and if we scroll a bit lower on the page, we can even buy the course straight from this page. So this button will lead to the course page and from there on, users can purchase it. So what we can do using this conditional display feature is to create two different versions of the elements added to this page. We can display this to a person that is a new visitor to my site or who has not purchased the course. And on the same page, we can change some of these elements so that if someone has purchased the course, they will not see this information and they will be shown other information. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to edit this page with Drive Architect. All right, so as the editor has opened, we're going to have access to editing all of these elements. Now, this feature is available for elements such as the content box element, the block element, or even the background section element. So if we take a look at the way I've constructed this page and we can see that this is a content box, this is a background section element, and this last one again is another background section element. So this means that for each of these elements, we will be able to create different displays and set up different conditional display rules. So if you select one of these elements, for example, we've now selected the background section element, we can go to the left sidebar where all of the options of this element are, and we can see here the conditional display section. Now, if we click on it, of course, the options will expand. So as I have customized the background section element, this will be the default display of this element. Now what we can do is add more displays and set up rules for those displays so decide when those should be shown or we can even duplicate this one and start from there. So what I am going to do is create two different variations for this background section and I'm going to start by duplicating this default display like so. So as you can see I have used the duplicate function. All right, so right now we do have two display sets for the background section element. We can either choose to stick to the default display and create another one or we can duplicate it one more time to have two separate display sets right here and then we can choose to hide the visibility for this one which is what i am going to do a bit later in this tutorial so what we've done now is we have duplicated this default display so now we can start customizing each of them now as i said my goal is to have two different variants of the same background section element that will be different according to whether the user is logged in or not. So if they have purchased my course or not. The first thing you can do with each of these display sets is to rename them. And this will be very helpful in case you are using multiple display sets for the same element. So I'm going to click on this edit icon, which is this pencil icon right here and rename this to logged in users. I'm going to click on apply and do the same for the second one. But of course, this one will be called not logged in users. All right, so we are now working with these two displays. I will leave the non logged in users as it is because this is what I want them to see and we will work with the logged in users display. So for each display set here, you will have some options available. First of all, you can customize it as you wish. So while you have one of the states selected and you make some modifications to this element, I've just removed that text box and we can even change the background section and so on, add more elements and just customize it as you would customize any other Drive Architect element. If you are not happy with the way it looks like, you can simply reset the display 
by clicking on this reset option. Right next to it, you will have the duplicate option, which of course will allow you to duplicate the display set. And then this third option is where we can set up the display condition rules from. So let's go ahead and click on this one. And as you can see, this pop-up opens. And from here, you will choose the logic of this element. Now you can create a new condition set or you can select an existing one if you have previously created one. From this drop down, you can choose what happens. So if you want to display or hide the content, if this rule happens, we're going to stick to the display content option and then we're going to add a new condition set. You can rename it, of course, by clicking on this pencil icon and we're going to call it logged in and then you are able to choose what happens. So when and if you click on this drop down, a list will open with a bunch of different options. We're going to go for user and we're going to open the second drop down and select the is logged in state. We have created our rule. Now, in case you think you want to use it on other elements as well or in the future, you can click on save as global which will save your condition set. And the next time you're creating such a rule, you will be able to find it by using this select an existing condition set option. So I think we're all good here. I'm gonna click on save conditions. And right now we know that this display set will show when someone is logged in. And of course we can go to the next display set as well and create its condition as well. We're gonna open the same pop-up. And in this case, our condition set is when user is not logged in and i'm going to click on save so we can of course go ahead and further customize the element as we wish for example i want this part right here to say welcome and also add the name of the user so what i'm going to do is add a comma and then i'm going to insert dynamic information and i'm going to do that by using this option select source user data and here I'm going to go for user first name, for example, and click on insert. As you can see, it has right away added my name in the editor. And of course, this is going to be different according to the person that is viewing the page. So briefly, if we take a look at my background section element, we can see that a logged in user will see welcome and their name and a not logged in user will see, welcome, are you ready to start your journey to becoming the greatest photographer? So as you can see, we have created two versions of the same element using this feature. Now I want to go ahead and do the same for all of these three elements that I have on my homepage. So for example, a logged in user does not have to see this text section. So what I'm going to do in this case is duplicate the default display and click on it to edit it and I'm going to simply remove the text in this display and of course set up the condition rules. So when user is logged in and save, all right, and then moving on to this other element that I have right here, what I want to do for this one is instead of the buy the course button to have the download ebook button because my students will get a free ebook once they have logged in onto my website and after purchasing the course. So in this case, I'm going to create again two different displays, one of which is going to be available for logged in users and the other one for not logged in users and simply change the button and delete this part. All right, so as you can see upon previewing and of course we are logged in at the moment, we can see our name here and a button that says click here to download your ebook. And of course we can customize this in various different ways we can add a link to take the users to their course. And this depends on the way you set up your website and of course what you are trying to sell. But this is what we see right now. I'm gonna open the same page in incognito mode. Okay, so as you can see, if we are not logged in, we're gonna see the other version of the page. So this feature will give you full control over what people will see according to the rules that you have set. Another thing to mention here is that when you are logged in and you will see your WordPress admin bar here on the top of your page, you will be able to see if the page contains conditional displays or not. Now let's go back to our drive editor so I can continue with the options that this feature has. In the editor as well, you will have this display conditions section which will let you see for which elements you have set up the conditional display feature. Now, if we go to the conditional display section right here in the left sidebar, we're gonna see that we also have some advanced options and I'm gonna quickly go through them. So if we click on this option, 
the lazy load option will appear. Lazy loading one of these elements means that when someone visits your page, a space will be reserved for that element prior to the full page loading. So in case the page loads a bit slower, the space will already be reserved for that element to load in. So this will avoid the layout shifts on your page. Now, when you activate the lazy load option, two more options will appear. The first one refers to uniformly displaying heights. Now, the displays you have created and customized might have different heights. This option will make sure that the display with the biggest height will be reserved when the page lazy loads. I'm going to show you an example right now. We're going to go back to this first background section for which it is very obvious that the displays have different heights. So what I'm going to do is activate the lazy load option and choose the uniform display heights option. So enable it. And then I'm going to save everything. I have opened the page and I am not logged in yet. I'm going to reload it so that you can see how the lazy load function works for this one. So as you can see upon loading, this entire space has been reserved so that I do not have any layout shifts on the page. And more than that, instead of the smallest height of the logged in display to be loaded here, this entire space has been reserved. Now let's go back and disable the option so that we can see what happens and go back to my page. So as you can see, upon reloading, the space reserved for this element had the height of the other display. Now lastly, under the advanced section, we have the lazy load background inherited from option, which will let you choose which background should be loaded until the actual element loads. So in case your element had different backgrounds on different displays, when the page loads, the space reserved for the element will inherit the background of the display that you choose here. Now this was how to use the conditional display feature of Tribe Architect. Hopefully this was useful to you and remember to keep checking our knowledge base and our YouTube channel because we are going to add more tutorials related to this feature.